Hello everyone, welcome back to OC Recovery's YouTube channel. Today I have a video and I'm gonna title it, What Somatic Slash Sensory Motor OCD Recovery Feels Like. I think this is a very important video to cover. Um, I'm not, it's not from a reassurance manner, it's just this is what recovery feels like from a really bad debilitating theme where my whole entire life was centered around avoiding the discomfort and stuff like that. Before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe or hit that like button if you wanna see more videos like this. I'm always gonna be covering sensory motor in, in somatic OCD. It's something I'm very educated on. I went through that journey firsthand. I think there's a lot of poor information out there. A lot of people don't really understand it because it's not so much like the POCD or the ROCD or the harm OCD and the contamination OCD. A lot of the ones where there's a lot of like outward compulsions and people are just straight up avoiding. A lot of people just don't understand the internal thermometer where you're basically going around engaging all day automatically and stuff like that. So again, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. So what is somatic OCD recovery feel like? It feels like I'm back to where I was before I had OCD, except I'm not the person that I was before because it's not about the, um, you know, trying to hold on to the idea of that person that you were because that person who you were got you to where you were, which is chronically stuck. And the person you are now is much more rational, much more calm, can think, th think things through, doesn't have to act right away, isn't really avoiding anything. And that's basically the point that I got to. And it's a, it's a, it took me a couple years to reach this spot. Now, as Jade said in their last video, you know, I don't measure recovery process anymore. I don't, I think it's, you're going to measure and arbitrarily say stuff like, oh, I'm 50% recovered, I'm 85% recovered. And that kind of comes a time where you just think, I, I don't really give a shit where I am. And I just know I can live my life and I'll more than likely maybe make some more progress in my rational thinking. So somatic OCD has absolutely no way to lock with me with intrusive thoughts. It's tried to like latch in at times, Maybe I'll be like hyper aware of my blinking for a little bit or hyper aware of maybe my saliva for a little bit, a couple times a month here and there. Um, it's not daily by any means. It has no chronic anxiety, not no intrusive thoughts whatsoever about the fear of being stuck and stuff like that. I could literally go back to where I was literally a year ago and it would not stop me from doing anything I want to do in life. I wouldn't like it. Remember, agreement is an acceptance, but I could go directly back to where I was, even at the worst in the mental hospital, November two years ago, 2019, with the tools I have now, and the way I would be able to handle the discomfort would be much better than back then, because I had no tools for acceptance. I only had conditional life, conditional other, and conditional self-acceptance. I still have conditions on my life. I'm not, you know, some Seneca the Younger or, you know, Greco-Roman philosoph, you know, philosopher, but I'd be excuse me, tremendous progress in my recovery journey. Now there's other things that have come up in the forefront, things that were affecting my life irrationally for a long time and I never actually worked on those things. But right now, where I am today, working on recovery for quite some time, not as long as some people, but that's irrelevant because you don't want to compare journey. I, you know, let's say beginning of next year will be two years working with Rob. Um, well, more towards halfway through the year in, in May, but, but still, I made tremendous progress. And the reason why I've made tremendous progress is because I made recovery, OCD recovery, a priority in my life. I didn't make it the only thing that mattered in my life because that's not good either, because you have other things in your life that matter, such as your relationships, whether you have a, a, a loved one or a spouse or family and friends. That's the same thing as family and the first two. I do that a lot. I'll say like, untrue and incorrect, which is the same thing repeated. So it doesn't make any sense. And, you know, I like hiking and I do all these things that you can do all of these things when you're suffering. And it's so important. I built such a high frustration tolerance because I knew my frustration tolerance was so pitifully low that it was going to hinder the rest of my life. Forget OCD. Forget sensory motor OCD. I knew that if I didn't, didn't work on these conditional life acceptances, that life shouldn't be this hard, and life isn't fair, and all sorts of stuff, it didn't matter why I thought like that. I can go back and be like, well, my parents gave me everything when I was younger, and I was really spoiled. And while that's true in the subjective manner, because you might talk to someone whose family is a billionaire, and they'll look at you and say, holy shit, you're poor. So it's all subjective, but I didn't learn any grit, and I didn't learn any hardship. Now, my dad didn't do that to me because he was like trying to maliciously attack me. He just didn't have shit growing up, and he probably did the old thing, oh, I didn't have anything, I'm going to give everything to my kids. 
and it didn't teach me anything. But none of that actually matters. What matters is this is the belief I hold right now. What am I going to do to get myself better? That's all you can do. And I can't even tell you how much the sensory motor journey and where I am today has benefited all aspects of my life. I'm a beast in business. <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous. You can be confident, okay? A lot of people are like, well, you can't be confident because it's conditional acceptance. No, you can still accept yourself unconditionally and still show confidence in what you do. There's there's so many incorrect statements about uh, stoicism. Oh, if you're stoic, you have no emotions. That's not true. You just don't allow the emotions that don't really have any benefit on your life, such as anger, extreme resentment, vengefulness, take over your life like it does in other people. I still get angry from time to time, but I, you know, like, well, that doesn't really make any sense. I don't know what's going on in that person's life. And it comes right back down. Instead of, oh, I'm going to chase this person in my car and show them and cut them off on the road and all this other crazy shit I used to do. So the sense, the journey itself is the biggest life lesson, if you allow it to be, than anything ever. It is the definition of hitting most of our rock bottoms. So it kicks you to the bottom. Hmm? You get yourself back up. You see what happens when I eat? before I come on here. It's all stuck in my teeth. I'm trying to do these videos. I'm like, so yeah, it's just the way it is. But I always got my coffee because that's important to me. But super important. This journey has shown me what I can take. There's not much that can be thrown at me that would really make me freak out. I could lose the business. I could lose my job. I could go to jail. I could do all sorts of things. And I don't really think that would bother me too much. There's certain things that would, and I still have to work on those things, like the going to the gym and stuff like that, which I've gotten so much better at accepting myself for who I am, instead of putting my whole entire self-worth on what I look like, because that just doesn't go anywhere. That's pure conditional acceptance. Again, this doesn't mean you can't change your looks and work on your health, but there's a fine line between it becoming unhealthy versus healthy. So um, that's what it feels like. It feels like, like it's not a part of me, you know? And I, and sometimes it creeps in, like Jay was saying, like, are you sure you recovered? And it doesn't have anything on me. It has nothing on me. It will never have anything on me again. Sensory motor cannot get me again. My my unconditional life acceptance is too good. It cannot come in and get me. There's, there's nothing I could see it doing, trying to trip me up, like, you know, like blinking or all the woo, probably look crazy doing that. There's no fear. I'm not afraid of it anymore. There's no fear present. This is why unwinding the core fear. Remember, sensory motor core fears, what do we got? Afraid of it, you noticing it for the rest of your life. Fear of fear drives somatic OCD, just like it drives GAD, generalized anxiety disorder. It drives the majority of many OCD cycles, but it really drives sensory motor. Because I hear people talk, well, exposures, you know, ERP is the gold standard. Yeah, exposures are great, but not really for sensory motor. Not really. Your exposures are going back out and not avoiding things that you were doing. Well, I don't want to go there because what happens if I'm completely, you know, all I can think about is my breathing or my salivation and I can't focus and all that. That is an outward compulsion. Avoidance is an outward compulsion, which is also not covered correctly. In many ways, people talk about like not touching doorknobs or magical thinking where you're flicking the light switch or stepping on cracks. The real typical thing that even the general public knows, oh yeah, stepping on cracks, OCD. Like, no, avoidance is an outward, you are outwardly avoiding something. It's an outward compulsion, okay? Now there's a mental aspect of that as well, but the internal thermometer that you have in your head right now, if you're watching this with sensory motor, and this is a huge carryover into physical symptoms too. If you're watching this right now and you're like, holy shit, this sounds really relatable or I, Nick, I can't like all, I'm just so automatic. Like it's just automatically firing. It's cause you're still scared. If you're still scared, it's gonna bring it up. It's a protective mechanism. You cannot bring down automatic rumination 1% a day or 2% a day or over 30 days. It doesn't work like that. If anyone's telling you that, it's bollocks, whatever you guys say over there in the UK. So it just doesn't work like that. I wish it did. If it, if it worked like that, we I would not need to make videos like this. I would say, bring down the automatic rumination 1% each day and you'll be recovered in 30 days. This is my method. It's no method. There's only rational thinking and not rational thinking. And a lot of people who actually think they're thinking rational are not rational. And the only way that I know that is because I know what I know. 
You don't know what you don't know. If I, if you came up to me five years ago and you were like, you're super ir irrational, I'd be like, no, I'm not. I'm the most rational person ever. It's like, no, I wasn't. That's just how it is and what's going on. So I had to work on this and I had to bring it down. So this is what somatic OCD recovery feels like. Not going to be too long of a video today. I got one that came out a couple days ago with every moment post. It was 50 minutes, my longest video. If you stay through 50 minutes of listening to me talk, I'm going to send you a cookie in the mail. Well, I'm not going to do that, but you, you, it would be amazing if I did. But this is what's so important about this particular topic is that you can recover. Sensory motor is not treatment resistant. Focusing on your sensation all day doesn't work as an exposure for most people. It just doesn't. You're trying to avoid the discomfort. You have to bring the fear down of why it's so scary to be hyper aware. Why is it so scary to be to have it in the background. You can still do things. Yeah, you might not be as concentrated. Well, I need to be concentrated. Why? Because I'll lose my job. So what? Well, then I won't live. So so then what? You live in a tent. Like, you can go down the rabbit hole as far as you want, but you can rationally bring your way out of everything. Our catastrophizing and our just like end of the world must, shoulds, and demands are driving the somatic OCD bus. And it's super important to talk about that. So thank you so much for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe and click that like button. More videos to come. Always comment down below what you want me to cover. Specific things about sensory motor. Uh, I know someone, real quick, actually, let me talk about it because someone did ask me about, remember, those are rational beliefs. The fear of being stuck forever for the rest of your life. Well, what happens if it ruins every event I ever go to? Um, what happens if I have a panic attack in front of people and they notice I'm breathing? Well, I can't go to the gym. What happens if I, if I hyperventilate too much and all this stuff? Fear, 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 fear. The sensation itself is not going anywhere. I still notice my saliva and my swallowing and my blinking from time to time. You've noticed that your whole life. It's always been there. It's never going anywhere. So the more you think, well, I'm going to never notice that sensation again, you are not going to see the progress you want to do because you're trying to prove to yourself why it shouldn't be there. You have to accept its presence, accept the anxiety, all the other things that come with it, intrusive thoughts, images, sensation, urges, anything OCD symptom related. Working on symptoms does not lead you to recovery. This is why medications take the edge off because you're working on a symptom of discomfort. Again, can't advise on medications. Medications help save lives. I never took it. I'm not against them. Who cares? But you're working on the symptom. Now you got to work on the core fear. It's like diabetes. I always use this example now. What are the two signs of diabetes, right? Type 2 diabetes. Increased, incre increased fasting blood glucose, elevated H1C. You don't work on that. You're not like, how do I bring my fasting gl blood glucose now? You're like, no, no. How do, I go, how do I get my pancreas to work properly again? How do you do that? You get healthy. Maybe bring your calories down. Maybe eat some more whole foods. Maybe exercise a little bit. Change your lifestyle factors to get to the core. Same thing with somatic OCD. No effect on my life, zero, none, not even 1%. It never will have me again, ever, ever. That doesn't mean I might not be hyper aware again, but it won't have me. It will never have me because I understand the fear cycle very, very well. You can too, you can do it. I'm not some unique, oh, Nick did it, he's different than me. We all say that, PTSD, GAD, OCD, coming out of a surgery, that person did it in six months. We all think we're the only one. It's what the brain wants to make it do. Who cares why it does that? It just tries to do it. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.